Hello, my name is Joy with 2A Radio Center. Today I'm going to show you how to program basic functions in your Vertex Standard VX230 radio. By now you've already watched our video on how to install the VX230 programming software on your computer and also the video on installing the FIF12 disk on your computer. So you're going to have to make sure before you begin programming your radio you have the Vertex programming software installed for the VX230 and also that FIF12 setup disk. To begin, open up the programming software, which on my computer is under Start. Either VX230 series, it may appear on your screen, it may appear here on your screen, or you can select All Programs and scroll down until you find the Vertex Standard folder and then click VX230 series. To program your VX230 radio, you're going to need both the FIF12 cable and also the CT106 pigtail. You need both of these pieces before you can begin programming your radio. And just wait until your programming software installs. And I always like to maximize the screen so I can see everything that's going on. Before I can begin programming the software, I need to make sure that my FIF12 COM port is configured. To do so, click on File, then Configure. Okay. Right now, I'm on COM port 3 and it says FIF12, so I know that I have the cable in correctly. If you do not see COM3 FIF12, or your computer may say COM4, COM8, you just need to make sure that it says FIF12 in parentheses next to it to ensure that you're on the same COM port as the FIF12. I'm also going to change the baud rate from 9600 to 38400. This has to do with the data transfer speed, and if you do not have your computer set to this higher baud rate speed, it may time out and you may have issues programming your radio. So, make sure that your COM port says FIF12 in parentheses next to it, and that the baud rate is at that faster speed, then click OK. Now, you do not just begin changing this main screen right here to program your radio. What you want to do before you create your initial profile every time is to first read the radio. To do so, you can either select this icon which says read, or you can click radio read. Now, before I begin, make sure that you have all of your cables connected your, to your computer. There's a light on the FIF12 which should be green. You're going to have the CT106 pigtail connected to the accessory jack on your radio and the radio needs to be turned off. It's very important that your radio is turned off. My radio is turned off. My FIF12 light is green. I'm now going to click read. Now it says, now the computer prompts me to switch the radio off, then back on to start reading from the radio. Okay, I turn it on. My read is complete. Click OK. So you see how this main screen changed from what it was just a moment ago. This is the data that is inside your VX231 radio right now, which is really limited. There really isn't anything in here. To add a channel for your VX231 radio, right now only one channel is active and it is blacked out. Everything else is grayed out, meaning that those channels are inactive. So now if I want to activate channel 2, I'm just going to click channel 2 and hit the space bar. And now it's blacked out. If I want to activate all 16 channels on the radio, I'll just click each one individually and hit the space bar. On this screen in the VX230 programming software, your spacebar, that's really the active key here. The next main column that you'll need to focus on is the W slash N column. Due to the FCC mandate, January 1, 2013, all two-way radios need to be programmed narrowband to 12.5 kHz or less. All Vertex standard radios are FCC compliant for this regulation. So, by default, this whole column will say end for narrow. If you do try to change it to wideband, you can change it here, but when you actually go to program the radio, it's going to default it back to narrowband. 
To change the feature here, you just hit the space bar. But again, it doesn't really matter if you change it to wideband because the software is going to force it back to narrowband. To change your frequency, you have a receive and transmit frequency that you can change. If you are not on a repeater, you'll have to make sure that your frequency for receive and transmit are identical. If you are on a repeater, which is a type of signal booster for your radios, you'll know about it and you'll know your frequencies. So for most users, your transmit and receive frequency will be identical. Okay. Just for an example, I'm going to change this frequency to 454.55. And all I did right here was type those keys into my keyboard and then I hit the tab button. And by doing that, I only typed the frequency on the receive half, and it automatically populated that same frequency into my transmit. So to show again, for channel 2, I'm going to type in 454.6. And then I'm hitting the Enter key. And again, the same frequency I typed in the receive populated in the transmit. Now, this is a UHF radio that I am programming, and the frequency range, you'll see, the frequency band for this radio is UHF, which you'll see right here at the top of the screen, which is 450 to 520. So if I try to type in 544, it says out of frequency range. OK. So the frequency won't be programmed into the radio. Um, a VHF frequency, I'll say 131, is out of frequency range. So if you're trying to program this radio and you have a frequency that won't program in, um, make sure that you either read your radio before you began programming. So make sure that you either read your radio before you started to program, or it's possible that you purchased the incorrect split. So please verify that information with Two-Way Radio Center. I'm going to change channel 3 to, we'll say, 451.7 to 451.8 and hit enter. And most radios, each channel is programmed to two sets of information. You have your frequency and then you also have your privacy code. Now, Almost every radio manufacturer will have a different name for a privacy code. You'll look out there, you'll see PL tone, CTCSS, DCS, subaudio, tones, codes, CSQ. They all pretty much mean the same thing. It's just an extra layer of security on your frequency so you're not hearing everybody on that frequency. If you have your frequency 454.55 programmed with a privacy code, then only other radios programmed to frequency 454.55 with that same privacy code can hear and send back to you. So I'm going to set a privacy code on this radio. I'm going to start with sub-audio under the DEC column. And one way to program the privacy code is you can hit the space key and you'll see C-67.0. There are two types of privacy codes. It's CTCSS and DCS. DCS is also known as DPL, but for the CTCSS, say I want to program channel 1 to a CTCSS privacy code, it'll say C-67. If that's not the CTCSS privacy code you'd like to program into your radio, you can double click and then the CTCSS frequency table will pop up. Okay. So I'm going to program channel 1 to a CTCSS frequency code of 74.4. I just double clicked on it and the information populated in both the decode and encode column. Now channel 2, say I want to program that to a DPL frequency. Say I want to program that to a DPL privacy code. I hit the space bar one time, which that's the CTCSS code. Hit the space bar one more time. This is a DPL code or DCS code. And if you don't want it to be programmed to D-023, you can just double click. The DCS code table will populate. And you can just click on whichever code you'd like to put in here. Another option to program a CTCSS code, I'll show you on channel 3. Instead of searching the table, you can just type in C 
and then whichever code you'd like, I'll do 67, which, con which converts it to 67.0. Okay, the same goes for a DCS code. If I don't want to program from the table, I'll just type in D, and then I'll put in 101. And then I hit enter, and the information populated on the screen. Common features that you might want to program into your VX231 radio is scan. To make sure that each radio, um, to make sure that each channel is set to scan, you can take a look at your scan column. If you have a check mark in your scan column, that means that your that, that channel is okay to scan. You may find that you're not getting quite as much power out of your radio as you might want. So this is when you can take a look at your power column for high or low. You want it to be on high for more power. If you want to convert it to low, just select the channel, select the H, and hit the space bar to change it to low. To change it back to high, hit the space key again. Okay. Common features that can be programmed into the radio are the side buttons. There are two programmable side buttons on the VX231 radio. To set those features, you can select Common in your programming software, and then select Key Function. The default in your VX231 radio for the side press is Monitor, side press 2, None, side 1 is a squelch off, side 2, None. The difference between press and press and hold is so you can get more features programmed into your VX231 radio. This up here, side 1 and 2 press, that's for a short press. To activate the functions for side press and hold, you have to hold down the button, the side button, for a few more seconds. So if I want to change the side press 2 from none to another feature, I can just select this, the drop down button. A common feature to set into the radio is scan. Okay. So I just select scan. If you have any questions about the programming software or if you need help, you can select the F1 key on your computer. In here, it says available options for the key functions. And if you would like a short description of what each function does, you can select that function. So hit back. So if you'd like to know the function of scan, just click on scan. So if you ever get lost in the programming software on definitions and, and what some of the terminology means, the F1 key is very helpful. Okay, I'm just going to apply the scan setting that I have on the computer and just give it a moment. and select OK. So now for my VX231 radio, I have all of the frequencies and privacy codes programmed into it along with the scan feature. All I have to do now is program my radio. To do so, you can either select right or you can select radio right. And it will ask you, do you want to start writing? Yes. The radio always reads the data in your radio just to verify it is the same model, and then it will click right. I just select OK. And now my Vertex standard radio is programmed. I want to save this file for future use, so I just click File, Save As. And you can save this file wherever you'd like. Right now it's defaulting to the computer, local disk, Vertex Standard CE99. Um, you can change that to your desktop if you would like. And I'll just name this Demo. Okay. So to show you, I'll close out of the software. I've already saved it. And now my file is here on the desktop Demo. Just double click to open and it launches the software. You only need to create your master profile one time. You do not need to read every single new radio that you have to program. All you have to do is open the master file that you made. Make sure the radio is turned off and you have a battery with charge in it. Then click right. All you have to do if you have 20 radios to program is just click right for each one and that will get you taken care of. If you have any questions or if you need anything else, please contact us at 2A Radio Center. Thank you so much for your time.